What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dapper Conversations, hosted by Black Menswear. We're here in the city of Houston, Texas. Uh, if you know me, you know Houston is pretty close to my heart because it's actually where I'm born and raised, right? So to be back in Houston, Texas is very special for a grand episode of Dapper Conversations, where today we're going to talk about mastering your craft, right? Perfecting your craft, putting in that work, and seeing how it grows. Now, I couldn't do that without having a great panel uh, here with me to help talk about that. You guys know me, I'm Deandre Bruce, I'm the founder of Black Men's Wear. Uh, to my left, I've got Keith Jacobs, recording artist, Houston music extraordinaire, uh, joining us today. To his left, we've got my guy Jonathan Sprinkles, uh, the founder of the Connections Lab, two-time best-selling author, joining us today. And then finally at the end uh, of the couch there, we got my guy Smash the Legend, uh, master barber, serial entrepreneur. Again, three gentlemen that have perfected their craft or are still perfecting their craft with us on the panel today. So gentlemen, I appreciate you for joining us today and I appreciate you spending your time with our family here at Black Men's Wear. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Now, you know, with that, right, we talk about mastering your craft, right? To be a master of something, requires ongoing, continual practice, right? There's this, there's this phrase that's out there, and I'm going to start it with this. There's this phrase that's out there that says, practice makes perfect. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that? Does it really make per perfect, or does it just continue to build you and grow you? Um, I'll start off. I believe in perfect practice, you know? So perfect practice means that you have to be consistent, you know, consistently always willing to grow. Uh, to have a, a regimen to, to believe in discipline, you know, and uh, that will yield the results that you want. What do you think, John? I think practice makes permanent. Mm. Mm. Whatever you do most, you do best. Mm. So you have to be careful about what you're practicing. Mm -hmm. That's what my mom always told me. Yeah, she says, right, so be right, careful, because right. if you keep doing it wrong, all you're going to know is the wrong way. That's but if you keep doing it the right way, keep struggling um the, what i've added to her words is the first time is the worst time mm. but after that it becomes easier yeah i think i think too the first time is the worst time a lot of people get caught up after that mm -hmm. and they just call it a failure yeah, right mm -hmm. but then like you say practice makes permanent you gotta do it again you gotta do it again you gotta do it again i say smash i mean shoot I'm sure in the beginning, some of those lines weren't right, bro. Yeah. I'm, sure, yeah. I'm sure, you know? Yeah. Uh, but the, 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 the practice at it, man, talk about that in your process, too. Uh, I wouldn't actually approach it just saying, it's not just saying, but I wouldn't approach it from the practice standpoint. I would approach it saying, fail as much as you possibly can mm -hmm. in the areas that you do want to see yourself grow in. Mm -hmm. okay. Wherever you want to win at, wherever you want to excel, the highest head fell as much as you possibly can in every possible respected area of that field. Yep. That way you become dynamic and you build the strongest blueprint for whatever you're trying to build. Mm. So you're really good at what you do. So obviously you work with a lot of different types of people. But if you mess up somebody's head, we talk about failing. That's something really big, right? Yep. So Because it's not just about you. You didn't fail at a computer program. You didn't fail at, you know, uh, a, sending out a report or something like that. This mm -hmm. is somebody else's head and their life and their livelihood. So how did that work for you? I'm very interested in that. Uh, it presents the challenge. The challenge is not the trophy of every haircut that I've cut before. The trophy is finding a new problem and solving it. Ooh. Because I feel like I'm the great problem solver. Mm -hmm. Most people call people barbers. I don't really feel like a barber. I feel like the great preparer. Whatever situation you throw in front of me, I'm going to be able to ace it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how it approaches me mm -hmm. because that's what life is. Right. Trophies collect dust. So whatever you won with yesterday, that was yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you just live off of yesterday, then you might as well be dead today. Facts. To, to smash this point, rain is due every day. You know, right. um, Speaking of failing, you got to be willing to, to fail fast. Yep. You know, uh, you can't take an L and just, just be lulling over that. You got to say, okay, this, I failed. Pick it up. Let's try it again. And then through that process, you get better. Yeah. I, I, me personally, I don't even like to use the word fail, right? Because sure. you know, I, I get what we're saying, right? I always, I always like to look at. I say everything's a lesson. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Turn that into because while we understand that, some people look at it and say, okay, well, if I've failed, I'm done, and they use it as a as a roadblock 
and like as the end all versus as a detour, as a hurdle, something you get over, you get out, get yep. around. So I, I, I remember I, I, there were there were times where I had two F words in my vocabulary that I found, I found myself using too often, failure and fear. Mm, yep. I always I can't do that. I fear this is and I fear this is one. First of all, serve a God that that shouldn't have any fears. Yeah. He's gonna take care of it. But at the same thing, I was injecting that negativity in my own mind because if I fear. I'm not going to take that leap of faith, mm-hmm. right? I'm not going to take that that jump that I'm supposed to take yeah. to get to where I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, for you guys, how was how was that moment of of launching the Connections Lab, right? Of of saying, I've got something, and I know I'm going into this. I'm launching into the deep. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to establish myself in my own lane. But I know there was a lot of pressure that kind of came with it. How did you get through that sure. to be able to take that first step? Sure. Well. I started a long time ago and I left a job that was paying me good, good money. money. Yeah. You know, you already knew where I was yeah, going yeah. with that, paying, <laughs> yeah. paying me good money. But I had clarity about not just what I wanted to do, but who I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I had to make the very tough decision, was I going to chase a paycheck or was I going to chase my purpose? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at that moment, I, I changed my prayers. I, I literally remember the time when I got down. It was um, April, long, it was long, long, long time ago. And I said, God, you know, I feel like things are going in the right direction. When do you want me to quit? When can I move on? Mm-hmm. And the answer that I heard back in that same, stu- you know, that still small voice, the one you just know is God, mm-hmm. usually because it's not what you want to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. And, and the answer I heard back was May. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, that's like right around the corner. No, right. you can't. No, no um, you know, I'm making a lot of money here. Yeah, Hold on. Now. Right, I thought you were right. going to say like later. Right. And I remember this like it was yesterday that that still small voice said back to me. Don't ask me the question if you don't want the answer. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we all experience that crisis of belief. Yeah. You know, even the man said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah. You know, we all experience that. And that's natural. It's funny because you said, you know, I serve a God who's going to take care of it all. You know, and I was going to ask you about that. Like, even, even in, in your own philosophy, you don't, you're doing some amazing things. You know, that's the part we really have to, have to work on because there's mm-hmm. something that we feel comfortable about doing. There's something like if you had to sing a song right now, sure, yeah. But what if we told you those cameras were actually connected to 40 million people, right? right? Mm-hmm. Something might be a little bit different yep. than yeah. that. And that's kind of what we have to look at, too. I believe but help my unbelief. Yeah. And there's that duality that you always have to deal with. Right. And, and that's what keeps a lot of us stuck. Yep. Yeah. Now, to your point, getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's a big step for me, you know, because a lot of things that I'm doing, I, I don't know the end result. I'm just, I'm walking purely, totally, 100% on faith, mm-hmm. you, you know, uh, and I can't see my end goals in time, but I have to say, okay, let, let's, let's just do it. Yeah. Let's jump out there yeah. and, and see what happens. And I, I, I want to ask you, so, you know, recently moving from one location, got a brand new spot, brand new team in there. You got to build out. I mean, that's that's something that, again, from a financial perspective, you added more, you know, to that. Now I got, you know, a, a larger space. I got more people that are, that, are, that are here that, you know, that they're kind of rely on me to make sure that this whole system is running. You know, how, we're, how from an entrepreneurial perspective, Right? How are you able to get over that initial doubt or fear that might creep up on you? Because you got to ride alongside the side of fear. Either you're going to be on the side of it that has you to where you back up and you don't do anything, mm-hmm. or you're going to be on the other side of it to where it's an adrenaline rush and you have to go through it. Mm-hmm. See, most people just hear the word smash and don't really understand what it stands for. Smash doesn't just mean, or it's not just some nickname or word just thrown out there. Smash means success makes a soul hungrier. Mm-hmm. So every time I lose, I win mm-hmm. because I'm learning more. So I'm adding wisdom to my own self. So I'm constantly still building to that blueprint that I initially said that I was building in the beginning. Most people, when they get to a certain point, they just want to go wide. Nobody wants to go deep. Mm-hmm. But if yeah. you go deep, you can penetrate the souls of everybody you're supposed to reach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So me cutting hair, I'm not just cutting hair. Like cutting hair is the doorway to what I thought was supposed to be what my career was based off of. Mm-hmm. But then I found purpose. My purpose was, was to enlighten and teach other people. So just imagine being one of God's soldiers, right? God fighting a war all day long. God trying to heal the world from whatever it's going through with sickness, uh, 
uh, people being broke, people being hurt, homeless, or whatever, right? But just imagine you say, well, you know what, God, I got you, dog. Like, I'm going to help as many people as I can from my right, side. Right. And right. when God sees that, the thing that you thought was going to be your financial freedom, it's not even it. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. God creates other doors for you that don't even have anything to do with the thing that you thought, which is actually your gift. Yep. Mm -hmm. But inside of that gift, you find your purpose. Mm -hmm. So God giving you your gift is your gift to you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a gift to you. But what you do with that gift is your gift back to God. Yeah, so I right. serve my purpose. And right. then my purpose, I, I knew I had to go through this mission. I had never seen nobody else do this. So I feel like I was, my purpose, I was born to go through this in this very moment mm -hmm. to create this thing that I don't even know exists yet. Like you said, you, mm -hmm. you walk in by faith. You don't even know. But as I'm as I'm growing, I'm learning. I'm supposed to pour into everybody around me. Because when I leave this world, I'm supposed to leave empty. Yeah. It's not a cup right. situation. Right. It's a fountain situation. Mm -hmm. So I need to grow even more so I can reach more people and teach them to teach other people. Mm -hmm. That's how we grow. I love it. I love it. Now you you hit on a great point that leads me to my next question, right? So so what you're doing basically in that give back effort of helping other people. Um, by what you've been given and it's in you pouring it out of giving to other people. Mm -hmm. Did you have a mentor? Um, along the way that, that, or do you still have a mentor that, that's helped you get along the way and how important for all of us, how important is mentorship towards this, this goal of perfecting our craft? Uh, when certain people don't allow you to make them your mentor, then you just take it from them. Mm -hmm. You, you're not going to tell me that like just being on this show, it's, it's cool. I never actually got to the point where I suited myself up. Yeah. I scrolled through black men's uh, wear and I'm like, okay, that's dope. Yep. Yeah. This is dope. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. a mentor for me. Yeah. Like, so I take from everything. I look at nothing negative in no situation. It's all about the positives that you can pull from whatever. Yeah. I didn't even know if this thing was going to work. I was like, when I get up here, I'm going to smile a little bit. I'm going to say what yeah. I got to say and then we're going to build. Yeah. But I know what to do next time yeah. because I know that the way we kill it today is going to be a next time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And one thing I learned that speaking about uh, mentorship is you got to be able to first be coachable. Yeah. You know, you got to be yeah. willing to accept feedback from several different areas. Right. You know, right. Um, uh, early on when I was in college, I, I thought I had it together. Even with, with my, my music, I'm like, man, I'm going to get out of high school. I'm a, This is my trajectory. This is what I'm doing. You know, uh, and I never expected to to be where I am today. You mm -hmm. follow me? Mm -hmm. um, kind of to pivot from that, I had an internship that I took right out of college, right? I said, okay, boom, I'm going to take this internship. I've now been a, been on that job for, for 12 years, you know, and I'm in a role to where that's helping me in my entrepreneurial journey. It's helping me with my artistry. It's helping me in so many different levels. Yeah. Uh, and, and I learned early on, you have to walk with kings, but never lose a common touch, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So all, although my job may seem so menial uh, to them, and like it may be a drop in the bucket to somebody, mm -hmm. I'm treating like it's gold. Absolutely. And the people that I work with and I, that work with me, I treat them like they're gold because therein lies my blessing. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. I, coming, coming to Jonathan, I think, you know, really, and I'm going to pinpoint this to you too, so one thing that I, that I hear both of you also saying is not just what I give that's given to me, but also what I give to others. Facts. Right. And so I know you have mentees, mm -hmm. you have mentors, right? Talk about that relationship and how that, that funnel of information well, goes down. My life changed when I read Albert Einstein's quote. He said, a problem cannot be solved with the same mindset that created it. Mm. And so you know what you know, right? and you're doing the best that you can. But if you knew how to get to where you want to be, you'd, you'd be, be there. there. You'd yeah, be there. right. So right. you have to, right. to your point, tap into somebody else. Yes, yeah, sometimes people are open to it. Other times you have to just watch and observe. Mentors are not just people who you can call and say, what should I wear to yeah. this event? <laughs> mentors are also people whose books you read. Some mm -hmm. of my mentors I'll never meet because they died hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, a mentor is somebody who can help to perfect some aspect of your craft. That's it. Mm -hmm. Somebody who has helped you along the way. So when it comes to mentorship, for everything you want, there's a relationship that can get you there faster. And if the mm -hmm. answer is no initially, if somebody says, no, I'm not here to help, 
Sometimes it just means you haven't proven yourself to mm -hmm. them yet. Yeah. Sometimes it means they don't know if you're really serious. People mm -hmm. ask me all the time, will you help me? Somebody emailed me today, will you help me? And I want to see how much you've done for yourself. Mm -hmm. I want to see how yeah. what, what you've done to bring yourself to a place where you caught my attention. And when that happens, then there are different paths that we take. Um, one of my, my good friends, Dr. Alex Ellis, we've been friends for 15 years now, but he said it's something I'll always respect him for. He, we had been friends and we, he helped me to learn how to dress. And literally, I'd take my clothes and I would say, what should I keep? What should I give away? Yeah. Literally, I mean, yeah. as humble as I could be. Yeah. Um, and then he wanted me to help him to build up his brand. But then he came to a point, and unfortunately, a lot of us don't get to this point, um, but he was mature enough to say this. He said, I realized we need to formalize our relationship. Mm. He said, I need to invest in this relationship so that I can get the other side of you. Mm. Here's my rule. Opinions are free, but advice has a fee. Mm -hmm. Because when you learn how to value yourself, you don't give it away. I like it. And so yeah. when we come to a certain point, we realize, you know, it's not just will you be my mentor? It's, you know what? I need to get what you have. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to just pick your brain. Because if I'm picking your brain, I might as well pick your pocket. Mm -hmm. So what can I do to give back to you? How can I invest in you so that you can then invest in me? To, to, to that, for somebody that's looking like and listening to that and saying, okay, that's a, that's a great point. So how should I approach it? Would you say they need to be more pointed and saying, okay, this is what I'm looking to learn. Can you help me better understand that versus coming back and saying, hey, I need help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've written about this. My last week in my 21-day challenge is all about, it's called a reconnect 21-day challenge, connecting with people uh, who can help get you to the next level. Mm -hmm. and, and I talk about mentors and I talk about the number one thing that people uh, are concerned about is, are you wasting my time? Mm -hmm. So how do you right, overcome that right, objection? Right, the way that I right. teach is that you always come at it from a, uh, from a professional standpoint and say, I'd like to be a customer of yours. What can I buy mm -hmm. of yours? How can I support you? How can I mm -hmm. give before I ever ask? Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, you automatically separate yourself from 80% of the people. Right. Not 80% of the people are just saying, bro, put me Give up me on head. game, yeah, bro, right, 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 bro, right, can right. I pick your brain, bro? Can I take right. you to Starbucks? Right. Right. Can I, wait a minute, yeah. I've got 20 years worth of experience and you want this for a cup of coffee, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so start yeah. giving first, yeah. how can I help you? Can I come to the next event? Can I bring the water? Can mm -hmm. I set up the lights? Can mm -hmm. I, Take your bags from the airport. You know how many mm -hmm. cups of coffee and bags I've taken after I had a career already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to humble yourself yeah. and be willing to do those things yeah. so that then, you, because what you, you, your, your gift to them, I love what you said, your gift to them is your service, mm -hmm. but the gift back to you is access. Mm -hmm. You get access to them while you're picking them up from the airport. Now that's a ride from. The airport to their right. hotel. Right. At thirty minute right. window. You have right. 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 right, right, right. So that's that's right. my approach, and I still do it. That's a good. I mean, that, that's a great perspective on it, um, and really looking at there's there's always a balance of give, 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 get, get, get. Like we know it's better to give than it is to receive, but still, when it comes to time, that's the one asset that we can't hold on to. It's going away. Right. We lose it. Every second, we've lost the amount of time. And mm -hmm. so when you talk about that balance of how do I know I'm not wasting my time, that's a great suggestion for somebody, you know, let me be a part of the process. How can I contribute to what you got going on mm -hmm. to where then they'd be a little bit more willing mm -hmm. to take that time and take that effort. And then, then things just kind of come in passing, right? I've, I've learned that, right? As you, as you work with somebody, you help somebody, you contribute to them. And all of a sudden, next thing I know, shoot, I got the whole book. Like you, over this time, you've just been giving me and it, it just, I just accumulated right. all this knowledge mm -hmm. over time, not even necessarily saying, hey, can you teach me how to mm -hmm. change my books from this to that? Like, yeah, yeah it, it, it just naturally comes. Um, so I, I, I love that you, that you pinpointed, you know, that aspect as a way to make it not a one-way street, mm -hmm. right? So, so make that, it two ways. That's the beauty of it. Look, so Smash is cutting uh, celebrities' hair. What if I said, bro, I want to be uh, a world changer. I want to cut hair. I want to do you know what, I learned this from you. And I sent it to you in your DM. Oh, look, I just saw how you did this. I spent 20 hours and I learned how to do this. You're my hero. Let me show you how I've emulated things that you've done. I've done, I went and got a yellow fresh coat too, just so I can look like you. That's a different all conversation. Of a, <laughs> yep. All of a sudden, right, because you served that yep. person, mm -hmm. 
you now have endeared yourself yep. to them, yep. right? And then it's like, can I just come talk to you? Can I see you? Can I sweep the floor yeah. at your spot? And once again, that's the access. That's how we grow. Yeah. We stop doing that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, um, Keith, bro. So again, working, building your music, mm -hmm. building your fan base, hitting the road, yep. doing concerts. Where does somebody like you gain inspiration from? It's a great question. Um, day to day, you know, um, one of the biggest things that I, I've learned how to uh, stay inspired with, with my creativity is by uh, just tapping out. Stop trying to be creative. Stop trying to write the next song. Let the, let it come to me. You mm -hmm. follow me? So mm -hmm. having uh, experiences, taking time to say, okay, let me just go out here and just sit and, and get a pulse of what the, the world is really doing right now. Mm -hmm. Where, where's the energy? How mm -hmm. am I feeling right now? Mm -hmm. What's going on with me right now? Yeah. And then that kind of channels my, my creativity process. I like that. I like that. Now, switching lanes a little bit from also kind of saying the creative vein, yep. right? Going to, and again, Smash is more than a barber, but that's what I'm focused on, right? <laughs> um, the creative process, because, bro, you that's one thing. Y'all know it. Like, a barber, that relationship, mm -hmm. that... That's therapy. If, if, I don't, if, I don't, <laughs> if I don't look at that in the mirror, like, yes, I might not come back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But being able to, to do what you've done... I mean, from the blend game, from the colors game, from, you know, short hair, long hair, all those aspects of it, learning that and being able to do that to the extent that, I mean, people are paying your prices that you set because you provide an experience. You don't provide a haircut. You provide mm -hmm. an experience. They ain't coming in and arguing with you because this is what the price is because yeah. mm -hmm. you're not getting this nowhere else, right? Um, the products product lines, things that you've developed and created and coming out with, where does somebody like you find inspiration? I, now, that one was, it's simple to me. Uh, God didn't bring me this far just to leave me right here. Mm -hmm. So if he was done with you yesterday, then we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yeah. So this, you, you, you don't even know like what this is doing for me. This is motivate me somewhere else in my mind, thinking about the next thing yeah. that we can grow into. Mm -hmm. um, even for myself, for my team, how we can approach things for, like it's just, it's, it's building. Yeah. But I left, like I left Louisiana because God didn't bring me that far just to leave me right there. I'd have yeah. still been in my same spot doing what I was doing. Yeah. You gotta max this thing out. Every minute of every day of everything that you're doing, Whatever you're doing, make it count. Yeah. If it's with the family, make it count. Yeah. If it's at home, make it count. If it's at the job, make it count. If it's while you're whipping your products, make it count. You're going to find growth inside of it because mm -hmm. you're going to always want to uh, reinvent the product, reinvent yourself, reinvent your family. Like however, you, Whatever you need to do to keep blossoming, the person that you were yesterday, the thing you were going through yesterday, that's not for you. Mm -hmm. It was only put there to bring you here. And then what you're doing right now is preparing you for the next, next thing you're going to go into. Right. Yep. Right. And when you teach your children to think that way, you're already giving them a head start because you're making them think. Yeah. A lot of us aren't yeah. taught to think. When you start thinking and you understand how powerful you are just from using your mind, mm -hmm. bro, you get so inspired, it becomes an addiction to just keep growing in yeah. every aspect right. of everything right. you're doing every day, yeah. every minute, every moment, and just love it. To, to smash his point, um, I've learned in my journey just moving with authenticity, you know, and learning that I'm not for everybody, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I won't yeah. uh, appeal or appease to everybody. Mm -hmm. But if, if I'm moving how I, uh, God said that this is what you need to do, if I'm moving on my assignment and I'm making music that's connected to what I want to do, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's authenticity. Yeah. It's being real and being mm -hmm. true. And I, Jonathan, you were, you were shaking your head a lot when, 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 when Smash was talking about basically um, today, what I'm doing today is not for today. Mm -hmm. What I was doing yesterday was for today. What I'm doing for today is for tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? And so, again, somebody who even is a motivational speaker, mm -hmm. right? 
How do you, what inspires you to be able to inspire others to tap into their gift? So I'm irrationally passionate. Irrationally passionate? Irrationally passionate. passionate Okay. Mm. About bringing out the best in other people. Mm. I'm a servant. Period. Turn the page. Yeah. And sometimes I serve on Facebook Live. Sometimes I might serve through a book. Sometimes I serve through opening a door or saying hello Mm -hmm. because I understand the power of that brief connection. Mm -hmm. So what I do is an extension of places that I believe that God puts me to be to serve people and let my light shine. That's one of my favorite uh, passages to just the power of that inner light. So whether I'm at the grocery store or whether I'm on a stage or whether I'm talking in front of or working with a celebrity client or whether it's just talking to somebody who says, you know, I, I, I need to I need some help. I, I'm a oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so this is that's what inspires me. Mm-hmm. Um, my uh, Lori, who works with me, she calls me Mr. Rogers because I'm always trying to, you know, I, 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 I talk a lot. Of, of stuff I talked up, but I'm always the one trying to help somebody or mm-hmm. encourage somebody yeah, and make somebody right, smile. Right. That's what inspires me. I'm constantly on the hunt for the person I haven't become yet. Mm-hmm. I like that. Can you say, say that one more time for me? Cash, <laughs> constantly on the hunt for the person. Wait, you wait. Let, let me straighten my back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I like that. I'm, I'm constantly on a hunt for the person I haven't become yet. Yeah. It's it, it's 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 we can't chase our own greatness. If we don't chase our own greatness, right? Mm. You get another one thing. I'm, I'm gonna come back to you, Smash. Like one thing about this platform, right? Um, and for me, it, it did take others. Like once I heard it a few times, like, bro, you're building something that's impacting people mm-hmm. across the world. And uh, my 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 guy Austin, we were at work, and uh, he was doing. He said, bro, hey man, you got fifteen thousand followers. <laughs> and then he came. Back, he said, bro. You got 30,000 followers. They just continue to grow and grow. And uh, my guy, Evan, my shout out Evan, my VP of partnerships. Evan uh, was going to London a couple of years ago and was like, let's, let's try it in London. And the fact that we were able to do that and impact on a whim two weeks out and get 30 brothers to pull up in London, right? Mm. Some of them flew from the U.S. Mm. to go to London to be a part of that. Um, Seeing those, I'm like, okay, okay, this this is bigger than me. This is it's it's been bigger than me. It's never been about me, but it's it's bigger than me. Yeah. Right? For me, that's my motivation, my inspiration. I got two sons that are the profile of black menswear, right? Mm-hmm. Five and a six year old boy that I don't want all that they see to what looks like us is a negative portrayal yeah. from a criminal that they're putting on the news. Mm-hmm. You know, because they got to tell stories, yep. right? They got to get people to come back, so they're gonna sell yep. what sells on the news. I don't want that to be what shapes their future, right? And so as I as as this platform grew and grew, and I started seeing that importance of, I mean, shoot, this is touching people that I would never ever meet ever in my life, but they might tap into that, and they might just see that little glimpse of positivity, and it might change their whole outcome. Yep. Yep. Right. And then once I started focusing on that and that comes back to that passion that you all have talked about, once I started focusing on that and realizing that that's my purpose, my purpose is to another thing, kind of bring out the best in other people in short and simple way that they can get it. And if they never see me again, they remember, oh, that's a dude that was black. Man, yeah. he was he sure was clean. I don't know what he did, <laughs> yeah. but he sure was clean. Yeah. Right. Just having those kind of little moments, those things inspire me. And then. When I'm able to go to a flash mob, like we got here in Houston tomorrow, anybody is going to pull up to the flash mob, and we have those conversations, and I hear those testimonials. Like, bro, I wasn't even going to finish school, but being here with all these brothers, I'll be, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be all right. Yeah. right. Just hearing those kind of things, that just continues to fuel, yeah. you know, the, 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 the fuel for the fire to ensure that this is bigger than us, mm-hmm. right? This is bigger than what we do on an individual perspective. It's about how we're impacting and changing yeah. the world. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. So you are in that growth cycle now where you look up, you go from 15 to 30,000. Most people will never be able to see 30,000 or whatever the number is now. I'm sure it's way more than that. What about when you were in that phase when you were doing the work but weren't seeing the results? That's where a lot of the brothers are. Mm-hmm. That, what was yeah. the thing that made you still believe 
that today and more would happen. I'm all about small victories, mm -hmm. right? And so for me to get a DM from somebody again, I've never met mm -hmm. to say, I love this platform. Thank you for showing me what brothers can look like because mm -hmm. I don't see that every day. Right. Those were the moments that just kept me going and going and posting multiple times a day and curating content and paying content, like do all these kind yeah. of things that were, you know, all still on a risk, in, in, mm -hmm. even still today, in a, in a risk factor, right? You have to balance out and time and I could be doing this, but we could be doing this and how all that works out. Mm -hmm. But just the fact that it was impacting more people than was in a room, right? And they get it from social media and they telling a friend, bro, I just sent this. And I have people that I work with that are like, yeah. I know I've seen you around the office, right. but I didn't know. Is this you? Like, right. you know, like just those moments, that's what kept me going because I, mm. I knew it was bigger than me. It, it, to be honest, this was my, I had that moment sitting there and, and, and sorry if y'all have heard this, but I'm going to go into it. Um, 2017, 2016, excuse me, Philando Castile, that was my moment. Mm. Sitting there watching this brother that got killed, that did absolutely nothing wrong, wasn't the driver of the vehicle. Was, was, shouldn't have even had to give his ID, but all right, you want me to give it to you. I'm just going to give you this fair warning. I'm licensed to carry this weapon. I ain't going for it. What I'm going for it for? Let me get my wallet you asked me for. It. Lost his life in that moment just based out of fear. And even the picture that they painted of this man. Oh, they was digging. They were digging. Mm -hmm. They, tried they were digging. Yep. And for me at that moment, I was like, man, what are they going to say about me? Mm -hmm. What are they going to say about me? And that's when I started the platform. Mm. At that moment, I was like, man, they, they even took this brother and tried to find negative images. Let me just start putting positive images of black men on social media. Yeah. That's, mm. that's, and it grew and grew yeah. and grew. And we're here today with the whole crew back there. Y'all can't see them. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just a blessing that, that, that came with that and focusing on that passion and, 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 and the purpose, right? Once I found that was my purpose, can't nothing stop you at that point. Yeah. You have to, because if not, you don't you don't fulfill what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. Um, but thank you, thank you for posing the question. <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, as another follow up question to that, right? This passion, purpose component. Um, I I kind of heard from you, um, you know, that 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 time in April. But for you, Keith, like, what was that? Was there a particular moment for you that really? drove everything forward like you know what this is this is what we're doing so here in houston here recently um i do these two events called if it don't feel like 90s r&b and living room social right okay. so uh when, when i'm at the house of blues okay yeah so we'll be back soon but um what really helped me is when i stopped using my art and i was being selfish with my opportunities and I start moving with more sense of responsibility, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I took that, um, that platform and I made it less about me and more so, okay, I, I have this experience, you know, uh, Houston artists are lacking uh, consistent outlets to put their content out on a higher scale. So let me take this opportunity and push that, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, the reaffirmation that I got was some artists like, hey man, I'm still doing my music because of the opportunity that you gave me, mm -hmm. you know? So um, it started out with, with me trying to pursue it and it kind of shifted me into helping other people. I like it. And it, it keeps me going. Yeah, yeah. Now Smash, was there a moment that you can pinpoint that kind of propelled everything else forward, made you change? Was there a moment that you were like, I gotta, I gotta leave Louisiana? Like that's, you know, that's a tough decision to leave home and go to a new city and, and, and start a business I thought I was doing something big back home, and when we went and visited uh, Manhattan, and everybody had a briefcase, mm. I was like, "Hold!" Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were doing something big, but where, when I when I made it back to the airport uh, in Baton Rouge, and everything just stopped, mm. I knew I had way more of a purpose. To serve. You can't be the big fish in the small tank. Mm. You got to get out there in deep waters. And don't worry about the waves because you just got to realize that you're the ocean. Yeah, you right. create the waves. Right. Mm -hmm. And you allow those, whatever comes up, it comes behind you. And you're just teaching the right way as you go. But I had a bigger mission and I couldn't complete that mission where I was at. Mm -hmm. Because if I'd have stayed and just been a product of my environment, I would have only been 
that product of my environment. Right. So I'd rather right. leave, start my own beginnings and create my own environment. And I can allow other people to thrive inside of that environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I, really, I really do. Now, to that point of thriving, surviving, excelling, right? Um, Jonathan, how do you set goals for yourself, right? How is it that you are able to say, okay, this is going to be my goal for this year? As we talk about continuing to move forward and, and looking at, okay, well, at the end of this year, I want to be here. I want to do this. I know some people kind of put goals out there that might not be, you know, the whole smart goal. They kind of like, you know, uh, they got to be measurable and sustainable and oh, S M A R T, yeah. right? So, <laughs> uh, those other things. Uh, but yeah, but be, um, how, how um, you know, how do you set goals? And one of my, you know, one of my, my mentors, actually the CEO of my company, uh, not Black Men's, but the CEO of the company that I give my nine to five time to. And he says, if your goals aren't big enough, or sorry, if your mm -hmm. goals don't scare the hell out of you, they're not big enough. Yeah, big enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me, okay. But like for you, how do you set your goals, um, whether that's short term, long term, and then all in between? So this is a, a very interesting question because, for me at least, because I don't do well with long term goals. I don't because things change for me. I'm uh, a quick start by nature. So if you say in five years, you know how much things have changed in the last five yeah. years? Yeah. yeah. There are positions now that people get paid for that didn't even exist right. five years ago. That's what was a social really. media manager right. five years ago? Right. right? right. So, so when you start saying five years, 10 years, I want to do this. Now, there are some things that I want to do for sure. Um, but I don't know when that time is going to come. Mm -hmm. There's two things that are important to me. Number one, the impact. I know for sure that there are impact goals that I have. There are things, not just that I, that I want to do, but what I want to represent. Mm -hmm. So I want to represent something in the world. I want to represent, I want to own a concept so that when people think about the word connection, yeah. you automatically think Jonathan, Yeah. period. Yeah. Um, and so I've got work to do. There are some other proof points along the way to build that brand equity in people's minds. Mm -hmm. But then I also have another set of goals, and these are what I call no goals. I want a certain amount of no's along the way. I think you're brilliant in what you just were saying. I was just on the inside like, yeah, <laughs> um, because the more you learn how to fail, mm -hmm. the less the concept of failure is actually scary. Mm -hmm. One of my dear friends, Garrett Gunderson, said, he was talking about how you haven't arrived in business until you've been sued. And I was like, oh, no, oh, 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 I don't want to arrive here. Oh, oh, oh. Right. He said, he said, he, he's so wise. He said, it's a scary thing that's no longer scary. Mm -hmm. John Jones said, John Jones, the, the mixed martial artist, he said, when you've made peace with the worst case scenario, then you can live. Yeah. 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 Right. That's cool. Right. Yeah. The worst case scenario is you get knocked out. Yeah. Okay. And right. I'll get up. Right. Right. And, and then what? Right. And and so so I have some no goals. And when you do that, it takes the sting out of it. Mm. No. Well, good. Thank you. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not there. Great. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a little insight into my life. Like there are some things that I want to do that are uh, just way different than what my past has looked like. And one of the people who I was just talking to uh, this week, he is the he has been the tour manager for uh, Beyonce, for Rolling Stones, for Fleetwood Mac, and like major artists yeah, like mm -hmm. this. Okay, so he was you had me at Beyonce. Right? <laughs> <laughs> First, that's it. <laughs> so he's like he knows everybody, yeah. and he asked me to help him with some things, and that was already very very uh, humbling that mm -hmm. he would consider me knowing who all he knows. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he said, so what do you want, Jonathan? And see, this is what I mean. Like, I want to have this conversation about those things when the, when the, the little boy inside of you starts to speak. Mm -hmm. That little boy that fears rejection. That yeah. little boy that doesn't want to be hurt. That little boy that doesn't want to be exposed. Because when he asked me, honestly, the first thing I said was, I don't know. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. And I'm the one helping the world and like telling people, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 okay, wait, 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 let, right. let me think about it. Right. And then I, 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 ha I, it was really interesting, just being a bit transparent. Yeah. It wasn't that I didn't know, it was that I didn't want to expose that part. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to just say it. I didn't want to be honest in that moment. Mm -hmm. And I finally told him what I just told you. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's interesting that you say that because I know a lady who managed, um, oh, it's a little independent artist, um, Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> she managed Tony Robbins. She managed some other people. Yeah. And he's like, next time you're in LA, I'll make sure you two talk. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So when you start, when, when, when you make peace with the worst case scenario, mm -hmm. that rejection, when you make peace with what if they say no or they don't like me, and you're able to just be and live, to me, that's that life that yeah. God wants you to have. Yeah. That's that, that, that amazing part of life when you can really experience all that God has for you. Would you say that's what drives you to stay positive and sometimes when, when you know, roadblock after roadblock might have come? But the fact that you're, you have a no goal, <laughs> like a goal of no's, does that yeah. help you get through that thing? Because that, that that's, that's pretty innovative, actually, yeah. when, you, when, you, when you think about it. Um, the fact that if, if I have in perspective yeah. the roadblocks that are going to mm -hmm. come, you know, my final goal might be this, but if I understand that these roadblocks have to come for me mm -hmm. to get there, mm -hmm. And I take them head on. Like that's 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 yeah. There's that's a powerful. there's a guy named Zha Zhang. Um, you could just look up rejection therapy. Mm -hmm. um, he he went through 100 days of getting rejected, 100 solid days of getting rejected every single day because he had a tech startup and he got rejected for some funding and he was like miserable. And his wife said, "No, you're you're good. I love you. It's mm -hmm. it's that guy I love, mm -hmm. not the money. I love you." And so for 100 days, he went on a quest to get rejected every single day. So he went to, he would go up to an officer and say, hey, can I drive your car? You know, he would, he would go up to just, uh, just go see for yourself. It's yeah, really funny. Yeah, yeah. But what he realized was that the more you change your relationship with rejection, the less power it has over mm -hmm. you. See, what's your relationship wow. with rejection? Yeah. You know, what's your, re what's your relationship with fear yeah. and failure? Yeah. That's what I wanted to get to. Right. What's your relationship right. with fear? Right. Because it's all a conversation. So what does it look like for me? Absolutely. It still hurts. Trust me, it still hurts because uh, I'm a human mm -hmm. and because I care and because I don't like to be told no. I don't like to fail. I'm harder on myself than anybody will ever be harder mm -hmm. hard on me. So it still absolutely hurts. But when you change your relationship with it, you may have problems, but your problems no longer have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bars. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So, and I laid down on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, you know, that's control, right? Okay. Controlling your own narrative. Mm -hmm. Change the narrative black men's work. Controlling your own narrative, right? Controlling your own story, your own outcome. Taking the bull by the horns. Mm -hmm. um, I think, too, the more you hear it, the more, like you said, that fear escapes. Yeah. Right, because it's no longer uncharted territory. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. It's, it's the waters of the oak. It is what it is. The next, the sun is gonna come up again. Yep. Right. It's yep. it's not something that ended. It's not an end all be all for me. And really focusing on overcoming that. I mean, again, that that's 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 innovative, and it's so simple. Yet it's mind blowing when you think about if you attack your negative outcomes as you go towards your positive goals. Mm -hmm. And you attack those negative outcomes head on, you will be more equipped when you get to the end of that road as well. I can show you thinking about it. I'll give you one quick thing. This will be 30 seconds and I'll shut my mouth. This is, this is how we all get to um, change our relationship. Let me ask you a question. Um, is there something in your life that you're nervous or worried about right now? Probably something in your life that you're mm -hmm. hoping, you know, that you're hoping doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. You can think of that instantly. Mm -hmm. Tell me two good things that happened today. We, we freeze, right? So the way you change your relationship with it is that you also have to be fair. You have a five and a six-year-old. Mm. You would never only tell your five and six-year-old what they did wrong. Right. You would never only tell your five and six-year-old what you hope doesn't happen. What do you do every single time? You tell them, hey, good job. Hey, you swung and you missed, but you swung. Yeah. Good job. You, yeah. you accentuate every single positive yeah, aspect right, of it. Right. And so what we, especially as black men, because every single day 
in some kind of way, we're reminded of our place in society. Mm -hmm. If nobody has your back, you have you to have, have your own facts. back. What yeah. I tell my son is you got to advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to reach your hand up and pat yourself on the back. Man, you look good today. Man, great job. Man, you said that. You did a great job. Man, you're, you are the number one thing that we all need to know is that we're loved and that we're safe. You are loved. And literally tell yourself, you are loved and you are safe. Mm -hmm. And say it over and over again. And then your relationship changes. And that's how you develop that true confidence, not just having something on you, but nothing in you. Wow. Yeah. That's... Uh, I would drop the mic right there, but I got to ask you one final question, <laughs> right? No, that's, that, that, was, that, that was, yeah, <laughs> that, no, that, that was. Um, my final question to y'all again, I appreciate everybody tapping in with us uh, for Black Men's Word Dapper Conversations in Houston. Every city got a different version. This has been beautiful. H-Town, I mean, again, this is special for me, yeah. right? This is special for me to be able to come to the hometown uh, and, 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 and have this type of conversation. So my last question that I want to ask you three gentlemen, and I'll start, I'll start with Smash and I'll make my way back this way. What is one of the biggest life lessons that you live by that you think can inspire somebody else? Constantly work on the truest you. Um, a lot of times we'll ask for, so it requires discipline. Discipline uh, is that part of Self-control, once you learn self-control, you can control self, right? A lot of times we'll pray for things and don't know that the answer for that thing doesn't come in a physical form. It comes as a thought that God puts in your mind. Mm -hmm. But if you aren't working in your truest light, in your truest form, you won't be able to see that thing that you prayed for that's sitting right up above right. because you have a cloud of the things that you aren't supposed to have yourself tied to. So work on your purest, truest self in your purest, truest form to get the most and maximize the most out of your life. Mm -hmm. But you won't ever be able to see what that is if you keep the cloud separating you from the thing that you just asked God for. Mm. Work on the purest, yeah. truest self. Yeah. I love it. How about you, Jonathan? So I'll stick with the thing I say at the, at the end of every event that I do. I say you were born an original, so don't live like a copy. Yeah. yeah. I remember as a young boy, I was the, the white, the, the black kid in the white school. So I was never whatever enough. I was too black for the white kids, too white for the black kids. I never really fit in. But my father said that to me. You know, he said, son, I just want you to be the best you that you can be. Yes. Um, one of my mentors in college, Nikki Bell at the time, she said, she said, the reason why you can't find someone else's path to follow is because you were put here to create your own. Yes. And I've, I've worn that coat every single day. So um, you were born an original. Don't live like a copy. Like and that. to your point, you can really, you know, um, you can't make your own footprint when you're wearing someone That's else's shoes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mine is along the lines of that. But before I get to mine, I'm, <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I'm right there with you guys, yeah. man. It's just uh, being authentic. And I, I know we talked about that earlier, but just making sure that you understand who you are, mm -hmm. you know, and, and walk in that truth, man. You know, it, it took me a while, you know, um, and a, a lot of times, especially uh, in today's age, social media will, yeah, will fool it'll, you. Yeah. It'll, have, right. it'll have you too right. high sometimes. Right. Uh, getting high off your own supply, and sometimes it can have you too low, you know, mm -hmm. uh, based off a of, off an of algorithm, you know. Um, so for me, I dialing back and understanding what my true goals are, why I started doing this, you yeah. know, and making sure that I'm I'm winning today and I'm tapping into that consistently to be uh, the person that I said I wanted to be. Yeah, to be you, yeah. be authentic. Yeah, we all speak, speak the same language, you know. Y'all have heard it. If you want to say it with me, say it with me. But you are the best version of you ever created. Because you're the only version. Yeah. Like you say, don't live life trying to be a copy and, and, and falling into the visuals of what other people are doing that gets you off your path. Mm -hmm. We take so much time. Not to, not to you know, equate us to, to, to thoroughbreds, right? But when they run races, they, take, they have blinders on. Mm -hmm. So they can't see all this other stuff going on. They see their rabbit. And they're running for that, you know, they're running to that goal. And the reason why they do that is because 
that's what they do. And they focus on doing what they do and everything else, all the other distractions are out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we get distracted every day. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, distractions that there is no reason why I should be comparing myself to these people. Yep. Right. Yeah. These people that, you know, you have to look at, you know, I always talk about life is a, is, a, is a formula and it's all a full equation. And so other people have different experiences that contribute to their equation. Mm -hmm. There's no way that I can equal you if my equation and the right. numbers that I'm putting together there aren't going to equal it that, just right? Add up. Yeah. It just doesn't add up. And like a lot of people lose sight of that and lose focus of that. And I love the fact that in three different ways, we said the same thing, mm -hmm. yeah. right? For those that are listening, the fact that it's more important to be you authentically that's right authentically you got it yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's more important to be you than it is to be anybody else mm -hmm. and when you're able to sit in that in that comfort it's not gonna be perfect nobody said that right nobody said that the the, the way is gonna be easy just because okay well if you know you're you it's gonna be easy but you're able to have harder days and overcome them you're able to have those struggles and overcome them. You're able to have those roadblocks. You're able to get knocked out <laughs> and come back yeah. to and keep it going because you realize that you are you. So I appreciate you three gentlemen um, with us today, bringing your knowledge, bringing your insight, bringing your passion, bringing your purpose. Because I think you might know it, but I don't think y'all know the true opportunity that you guys have allowed us to help change the world with this conversation. So again, I appreciate you gentlemen. Appreciate the crew back there, everybody. Absolutely. Appreciate our, our live studio audience. Can y'all give us a round of applause? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this episode, just like the last episode, was brought to you by Black Menswear and BM and Co Menswear. Just dropped the new suit line, so y'all go ahead and get you something. Yeah. Uh, hey. yeah. You know, <laughs> the drip is real. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next month, we're going to New York. I don't know if New York can be what Houston was. Mm. But next month, we're going to New York, so y'all be sure to tap in. Uh, be sure to play the recap. We got the recap that's going to come out here in a little bit. Also, the, the bars that were dropped, we're going to also put out on YouTube as well. So y'all be sure to tap into that. Appreciate y'all tuning in with us. We love y'all. Y'all be safe. We out.